Hello everyone, welcome to your Tuesday lunch break. I'm Tanya Rivero. We begin today with the latest census report out this morning showing the U.S. population is expected to grow significantly older over the next several decades. By 2050, it is projected to reach 83.7 million, almost double the number of elderly in 2012. The baby boomers are largely behind this shift as the first wave began turning 65 a few years ago and the racial phase of the elderly is changing with many more Hispanics and non-whites in the mix. By 2050, the U.S. is expected to have the largest older population of all developed nations, with the exception of China and India, the world's two most populous countries. Joining us now to break this all down is Daniel Mitchell, a senior fellow at the libertarian think tank, the Cato Institute. Hi, Daniel. Thanks for being with us. Uh, glad to be on the program. So, Daniel, this report concludes that this dramatic population shift is expected to drain resources from areas like education and shift them toward areas like health care. I think that's a, probably an obvious shift, but what are some of the other changes in store? From an economic perspective, the big thing we need to look at is we're going to have a worsening uh, worker-dependent ratio. What does that mean? It simply means that as our population ages, there are going to be more and more old people relying on the sort of that 16 to 64 working age group uh, to produce the goods and services our economy needs. That's a big challenge. E e setting aside government policy and everything else, an aging population, whether it's in the U.S., Japan, or in Europe, is going to be a significant burden for a lot of economies moving forward. So what does that mean specifically? Let's talk about Medicare. Is there any chance it will last? That's the real challenge. Uh, now let's bring government policy into the mix. When you have tax and transfer programs like Medicare, like Social Security, like Medicaid, and a lot of these programs explicitly funnel big benefits uh, to the elderly, and your population is aging, that's a recipe for fiscal crisis. I mean, we all probably remember in school learning about a population pyramid. The assumption was always that you'd have a lot more workers and a small group of retirees. Well, we're moving from a population pyramid to something more like a population cylinder. And tax and transfer entitlement programs simply don't work. You're going to have too many people riding in the wagon and not enough people pulling the wagon because the tax rates that you would have to impose on those workers would be would be crippling to the economy. And that cylinder can almost get top heavy, which would certainly mean it might topple. Let's talk a little bit about the younger workers. Is there any hope for this group? What do they have to look forward to? Well, right now, they're already paying 15.3% payroll taxes between Social Security and Medicare. That's the so-called FICA part of their paycheck. Of course, they only see half of it because the other half is paid on their behalf by, by their employers. But it's 15.3% now. In order to try to bail out Social Security and Medicare, you're talking about those tax rates, in effect, doubling. And, of course, that's a huge burden on these younger workers at a time when economic growth is likely to slow down because so many people are going to be leaving the labor force, which to me is why I mean, we're facing a slow motion train wreck. That's the bad news. The good news, it's slow motion. Right. If we do real, genuine entitlement reform now, we can avoid the crisis 15, 20, 25 years down the road. All right, we'll have to all get to work. Daniel Mitchell of the Cato Institute, thank you for that. Thank you.